on the bell. Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. And right now, we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romain Bostic alongside Scarlett Fu. We're counting you down to the closing bell and here to help take us beyond the bell. It's a global simulcast with our friends Madison Mills and Tim Senevic. Welcome to our audiences across Bloomberg Television Radio Originals and our partnership uh, on uh, YouTube. A big flip-flop over the last couple of hours, uh, Tim, uh, uh, Maddie, uh, in the markets, uh, where we've gone from green to red across the board here uh, on what's going to end up being another uh, down week. Yeah, obviously with Apple being the biggest component of the S&P 500 and falling by over 4.7 percent, that turns into a big loss for the index and kind of drags down the entire sector. I'm curious, too, whether we're going to see sort of dragging down in the overall AI space, given mm. that uh, that's such a key part of this rally that we've seen, Tim, so far this year. Well, I want to bring in our comments from Leo Kelly, the founder and CEO of Verdant's Capital Advisors. He just joined us. And he said that there's this razor thin line of perfection that's getting tighter and tighter because the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are just priced per for perfection right now. And the issue yesterday that's leading to the sell off today was Apple missing on those iPhone numbers. Just that one little thing because of Apple's size, Maddie, and because of the way the market's priced for perfection, that sends everything lower. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting, Scar, when we think about, too, this jobs data that we got this morning and what that tells us about the consumer as well. Yeah, well, the labor market is cooling. That's what the jobs report showed us, but it is in an orderly way. And if you certainly compare it to the pre-pandemic times, it's still fairly strong. What's interesting here is you would think on a day like today, Friday afternoon after some of the biggest companies uh, reported their earnings, that volume would be mm. below average. It's not. It's above the 10-day average. Yeah, uh, we can see that uptick on the volume on a day where you get uh, the socks moving to the downside here. Well, look out below here. Maybe some concerns going forward as we head into the next week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down about 150 points roughly on the day, right around that 35,000 level, down about four-tenths of a percent here on the day. The S&P 500 lower for a fourth straight day, lower on the week as well. On the day, it's a, a five-tenths of a percent decline. Similar story for the Nasdaq, down for a fourth day by about four-tenths of a percent here on this Friday. And let's take a look, quick look at the Russell 2000, also down for a fourth straight day, only by about two-tenths of a percent. But across the board, we're in the red on a weekly basis. Yeah, there's something for everyone. When you look at some of the news and data that we got this week, you have the Atlanta Fed GDP now jumping at 3.9 percent this week for the third quarter. Then you have a productivity uh, up to 3.7 percent. That's the highest level since the third quarter of 2020. And then today you've got Bank of America and then today J.P. Morgan both taking recession calls off the table here. And then you've got the jobs report, you know, a, a, a mixed bag, but mm -hmm. still seeing some good news both for the Fed and for consumer scar. And it initially lifted the market but as the afternoon wore off, wore on, we saw Apple drag everything lower. I'm taking a look at the group ranked returns for the S&P 500. If you split it up into two dozen groups and look at the retail retailers at the very top there, mm -hmm. up by 4.3 percent. That is Amazon. And then you look at consumer durables and apparel. Uh, that, of course, is some of the VF Corp and home builders. And then you move on. And you look at the very bottom, tech, hardware, and equipment, all of that is Apple. Apple dragging that group down by more than 4%. Yeah, well, Scar, I want to go back to the positives here and look at some of our gainers, starting with Warner Brothers Discovery announcing that they're close to offering an expanded slate of live sports to Max, formerly HBO Max, of course. Uh, this gives them a chance to offer uh, consumers another more expensive subscription off offering. That could be, you know, a boon for them in terms of revenue, but also they're going to have a lot of competition in the space. Also today, a Bank of America note on Warner Brothers saying that this could be a dividend play, particularly because of their robust Cash, cash flow. And then, uh, of course, I've got to talk about Amazon, obviously the huge gainer of the day, driving better margins from decreased costs, getting quicker, more effective, and cheaper uh, cardboard box deliveries, as Tom Keen likes to call them. Uh, definitely back to pre-pandemic levels for the brand. Uh, also, a lot of potential revenue streams, uh, as we were talking about earlier today, Scarlett, with the summer I turned pretty on Amazon Prime. Mm. Everyone's got to watch it this weekend. So a lot of potential revenue streams there for Amazon. Uh, and then I want to end on Arista Networks because this was the best performer of the week coming off its lowest lows ever. Uh, Arista sells those switches that speed up communications among racks of computer servers uh, that are packed into internet data centers. So they've got great earnings. This is an AI name uh, and their biggest 
customers, Tim, are Meta and Microsoft, so good for those names as well. All right, you got the gainers, I got the decliners. I want to start with Apple. We've been talking about the results all day. The worst day for the company, uh, company stocks in September of 2022, down 4.8%. On a points basis, the biggest decliner in the S&P 500. Of course, a mixed quarter for the company, iPhone sales revenue disappointment, services revenue setting a record for the June quarter. The company also giving an outlook for the current quarter. It worried analysts the demand for iPods and Macs will be sluggish. The company said, you know, hey, tough comps with a year ago when everyone was buying, uh, but still analysts were disappointed. Fortinet, the worst performer in the S&P 500 on a percentage basis, down 25% today. The biggest decline on record, uh, cut its revenue and billings guidance for the year. It's a cybersecurity firm. The big question from analysts, is this the start of a more prolonged slowdown when it comes to demand for these services? And then Nikola falling 26%, losses accelerating later in the day. This is uh, after the electric truck maker named Stephen Gersey as its new CEO. We should note this year through Thursday, the stock was up more than 57%, but giving back a good bit of those gains on today's tumble. Of course, a lot of the moves that we saw today and this week uh, were directly correlated with what we saw in the Treasury space here. Uh, some interesting moves here, particularly in the belly of the curve, a five-year yield uh, was up about, uh, what was it, something like 14, 15 basis points on the day here. Uh, so interesting to see a re-embrace here uh, in the Treasury space, despite the sell-off that we had seen to start uh, the week. Your 10-year yield up about 13 basis, uh, 13 basis points uh, here on the day, and even out on the longer end of the curve here, I should say down on the day, excuse me, and your 30-year yield uh, down nine basis points on the day, Scarlett. Yeah, and uh, you know, one thing to keep in mind is we have a lot of Treasury supply next week as well. So that's going to add to the rate volatility that we've already seen this week, which has been uh, pretty, pretty mammoth moves, especially if you look at like the t tenure uh, yesterday. Yeah, well, in Scarlet, it's interesting when you s talk about today because we keep saying that there was a little something for everyone, right? And I kind of feel the same way about the big tech names because you had Amazon beating expectations with record Prime Day sales, for example, uh, but iPhone sales down. So I have to wonder when I'm thinking about where to kind of place the consumer in terms of spending, it just feels like you can pick data points on either side for all of these questions, Tim. But, but but you go back to some of the earnings, and I mean, particularly yeah. some of the secondary ones, because you know we, we were kind of talking a little bit earlier on the on the TV program. Uh, you know, it was a WW, the company formerly as Weight Watchers. Uh, there were a couple other kind of consumer-facing companies here that uh, clearly were struggling there. When we talk about, at least in terms of the results, uh, some of the real estate companies like Open Door and Redfin. Yeah. Uh, so there's pockets of this economy, and particularly when it comes to consumer spending, that really isn't holding up. So I don't know where you get the picture of that softish landing. Uh, I guess if you look only at the labor market, yeah, it's there. But if you look elsewhere, I don't know. You can make a case that maybe this could be hard. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. It brings us back to the, the conversation that we had with Poonam Goyal at Bloomberg Intelligence yesterday in the wake of Amazon earnings. She said that customers here in the U.S., uh, they're not strapped. What they are doing is they're discerning. Mm -hmm. They're choosing very carefully what they buy. They're not necessarily trading down, but they're just very careful about what they're buying right now. And look, we get a slew of economic data next week. We get a couple more earnings next week, Scarlett, with uh, Disney um, and, and other SoftBank as well. So we'll get you know different sort of reads in different areas of the economy and a little bit of entertainment on where people are spending their money. It'll be interesting to hear if we get um, you know, how the numbers at Parks and Entertainment Division are as a result of uh, if people are spending their money there. Well, we've already heard that Disney, I think it was the 4th of July, saw very little traffic uh, at its parks in uh, California and in Florida. So that's an indication that all the price increases that they've implemented mm. uh, after the pandemic is starting to not scare people away, but put people off a little bit. Uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see, but I, you know, I don't know. I, you know, it, it's if we're trying to sort of read this just through the lens of uh, the economy, meaning trying to extrapolate what's going on with corporations, or you want to do the reversal of that here, is what we're talking about or what we're seeing, I should say, is that really accurate? An accurate picture, I should say. Well, I feel like Romaine, you probably got a good read on the economy when you were in Alabama for about uh, 24 hours for NABJ. Did you notice anything? I was about there for the... 36 hours, and oh, all, I'm so and you want to know what all the talk was? I mean, what was it? Tell oh me. my gosh, all the talk. What the weather? It? it was hot. Alabama football. Oh, oh no. Yeah. No, 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 nobody cares about the economy. <laughs> nobody cares about anything down there. It's like just football and more football and more.
So there's plenty of spending on the football program yeah. there, right? Yeah, well, football is doing great. I mean, if you're looking for a bright spot in our economy, <laughs> Alabama football is on fire. Hey, invest experience in, Can you invest? Can, uh, there's can you invest in the there. Crimson Tide? Because that might be a good <laughs> bet uh, based on what I saw down there. Uh, in all seriousness, though, too, I mean, you know, just anytime you go traveling, you kind of get a good read, too, of kind of what's going on here. And look, I, you know, this is just anecdotal, but the airports are full. I got, I came out the airport today, a Friday Feels morning, like and it was packed at, at the New York uh, airports here. People look to go wherever they're going. Every airport yeah. I've been to over the last two years yeah. just feels like it's too small for the area <laughs> that it's in. Oh, oh, well, you certainly haven't been to the Birmingham Airport. Was it not crowded at all? I'm saying it's small. Okay, well, everything, yeah. no, that's what I'm saying. Everything is too tiny. They did have a chip People play. everywhere, that's about not it. seats. Tim Stenovic yeah. has there's some this imbalance. feedback for our transportation there's still department. There's still an imbalance going on, guys. <laughs> We're not back to the norm yet. It's still an imbalance there. Yeah. And don't forget, Bloomberg News reporting that uh, U.S. domestic trips, the flights, getting a little bit cheaper, you guys. So where's get Carol, those, get those flights now, you guys. I thought she would be guys. back by now. No, uh, she's not she's back, back for you next week. Don't worry. Cheaper domestic fares. How about that? Don't worry. Carol's going to be back with you here next week. But, guys, that is going to do it I wasn't asking for her to come back. I just want to know where she Oh, was. I understand. <laughs> I understand. Well, right, we she's go. on vacation. We have to go. <laughs> that does it for our coverage. Reminder that Bloomberg Business Week, it's now on Bloomberg Originals. We're going to see you next week, you guys. Have a great weekend.